Question 3. Compound T is an isomer of uh, C6H chart. And the T structure is given, name T. So first, we need to identify the longest carbon chain. So let's say this is the first one, second, third, and the last one. So four carbon main chain. And these two will be the branch. And these methyl groups, they are located at second and the third carbon. So that's why we call 2,3-dimethyl. Di means 2. Dimethyl built 2 in 4 carbon. And the double bond okay, is at the second carbon. So built 2 in. Draw the skeletal formula of the structural isomer of T that shows cis trans. Okay, because molecular formula given C6H chart is very easy for us to get the cis trans isomers. Okay, the first thing you need to do is you try to use the the straight chain. Okay, let's let's say this one six carbon one two three four five six. So six carbon. Okay, do it again. Okay, one two three four five six so six carbon and we need to make sure it's from cis trans okay then we don't put the double bonds here or here don't put at the terminals because when you put the terminals then it's ch2 okay so what you need to do is just put the double bond let's say here so this carbon and this carbon now it has two different groups like this okay with one hydrogen and this one this alkyl group with one hydrogen and this alkyl group so it can form cis trans or you can put the double bonds here right this one also can form cis trans because h with this methyl h with this propyl right okay these are two uh, possible uh, isomers that can form of course there they are others isomers that can form cis trans but this is the easiest one Okay, part C. Each carbon in the T form a sigma bond. Okay, this one, a sigma bond, or and all these CC bond they are sigma bond. To at least one another carbon. Okay, as shown. On diagram, draw the orbitals that represent the pi bonds that are also present in T. Okay, so for this one, you just need to draw the uh, electron crowd above and below the plane. Okay, this one is represent one pi bond. This two uh, is represent one pi bond. So what you need to do is just draw two electron crowd like this. Okay, which can represent the pi bonds. Okay, and state the hybridization of the two carbons between the between which the pi bonds form okay the pi bonds form between these two carbon as i told you these two carbon they must be sp2 okay these two they are sp2 okay why because these two carbon they can form one two three sigma bond so the three sigma bonds is actually from the sp P two hybrid orbitals. Okay, sp two. Okay, this one is three times sp two hybrid orbitals. In these orbitals, it has one unpaired electron each. Means it will form three sigma bonds. Okay, and the carbon has four valence electron. Another electrons will stay in the unhybridized p orbital and this carbon as i told you these two they have p orbital and p orbital and these p orbitals they will overlap and form these pi bonds 
So hybridization of the two carbon must be sp2. Okay, part D. A reaction scheme starting with T now okay, is uh, undergo two reactions. Okay, reaction one, we know that this T will undergo oxidation because the CC double bonds okay, break, the pi bonds break, and it's formed diode. So give the reagent and condition for reaction one, very easy, cold dilute acidified KMnO4. And reaction two, you need to use catalyst, you will form V. How to form form this, you no need to know, right? So just follow. Okay, at the end, after the reaction two is from V, which has ketone group. State and explain how 2,4-DNPH can use to detect V, this one, the V, right? Very easy. When we use 2,4-DNPH, it will react with this V and form orange precipitate. Orange precipitate. Because V has carbonyl group. The progress of reaction 2 can be monitored by infrared. The absorption of OH is always present okay, because water use means you cannot really uh, discuss any things with OH bond. So no need to really uh, discuss the one that uh, 3200 uh, the, the absorptions. So what you need to focus is the formation of the CO double bond. After reaction, the CO double bonds, the carbonyl group will, will appear. And another bond that you have to look at is here, the CO bond, CO bond. After the reaction, the CO bond is disappear. It won't show, right? So these are the two uh, absorptions that you need to uh, put okay so first one the absorptions in uh, 1670 to 1740 uh, this one is per cm or we call wave number okay will appear which indicates formation of carbonyl uh, so this one is for carbonyl okay after reaction carbonyl groups form so which one disappear as I told you the CO bonds will disappear. Okay, the absorptions in 1040 to 1300 will disappear, which indicates CO bonds being removed after the reaction. Okay, part E. V is used in a wide range of organic reaction. So these are the, the reactions that involved. Now try look try to look at what is asked first. Okay, V and W are colorless and soluble in water. State what you observe in reaction three. Ah, this one. Reaction three. When we try to use the alkaline aqueous iodine, this one is to uh, test the methyl ketone. So this is the methyl ketone group. V is has methyl ketone. Then with this alkaline iodine, it will form yellow precipitate. And it will form this W. W is the uh, this uh, carboxylate salt. Uh, it's actually a, a few steps reactions. When the methyl ketone is there, the CH3 will undergo halogenation and form C this part will form CI3. Once it's formed CI3 then it will further uh, hydrolyze. Hydrolysis happen and this carbon will form will get H to form CHI3 the iodoform and this carbon will form COOH which is okay the one that formed this carboxylate. When it's formed COOH, this one is formed COOH, 
the carboxylic acid will further react with the hydroxide here, alkaline, to form this carboxylate salt. Uh, that's why it's formed W. Okay, part two. Reaction three is a redox reaction. Reaction three. Okay, this one, redox reaction. So what species or which of the reactants is reduced? Very easy. Iodine after reaction from iodoform. So it's from zero to negative one. So iodine is the one that being reduced, obviously. Okay, construct an equation for the reaction for use the H with square bracket to represent the reducing agent. Okay, so for reaction four, very easy as you can see, is from this ketone to secondary alcohol. Means uh, it's going to add one hydrogen here. Okay, pi bonds the uh, pi bonds uh, break and is add another hydrogen here. So in this reaction for you need to add two hydrogen. Okay, so in the equation you just put two H then form the C6H14O. Okay, X is a mixture of two optical isomer. Where is X? Okay, this one. After the reduction is from X. So we know that X is has a chiral carbon, this carbon. So this carbon is has one, two, three, another one is H. Four groups. That's why it's chiral carbon and it's from optical isomers. Okay, draw the two optical isomers of X. Very easy. So you just uh, try to draw the 3D uh, structure. Okay, put the four groups you can put in at any any place. But when you put, let's say, this alkyl group you put here, then the middle image must follow. When you put H here, this H must follow. Okay, when you put the CH3 in front, this CH3 also need to put in front. When you put this OH at the back, this OH must at the back. So the mirror image must follow. Then you can get full marks. Okay, both optical isomer of X can be dehydrated to form uh, Y. Okay, uh, something like this. Uh, OH will remove together with the uh, hydrogens on adjacent carbon. Okay, adjacent carbon is here and here. This carbon, uh, if you're not really uh, under, means uh, it don't have any hydrogens to remove. That's why it's not going to happen here. It's going to happen here because this carbon is has three hydrogen, which can remove with this OH. It just, one of the hydrogens will remove, right? Okay, after the remover, then it will form this Y. Right, means this group stay like this. Okay, now this is the one that form the monomers. Okay, draw the repeat unit of polymer Z, which from the Y. Okay, very easy. Okay, if you can get this monomer, you just remove the pi bond at tails. So you get this repeat unit. Okay, so now it's uh, seven, part seven. Reaction 6 does not proceed quickly at room temperature. Suggest why. Reaction 6 is what? Okay, this one. From Y to form Z, the polymer, reaction 6, this one will not really happen easily. Uh, the standard answer always uh, is activation energy. High activation energy of the reaction. That's why it's not really fast. Okay, that's all for this question. Thank you.